You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, and this time we're jumping right back into Lake's Path. That's right, we're getting a little bit more Lake. Ooh, it's been so long. Hope our sweet little lion boy has stayed innocent all this time. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's go. Let's go. Okay. So, bedtime? I know I didn't get up from the bed stretching out. Can you help me with the table? Sure. We moved the table together and put the mattress borrowed from Travis back between the two beds like the previous night. As we moved the mattress, a passing thought catches me off guard. It would be nice to sleep in Lake's bed, out on the floor. It's awfully early to even suggest something like this. Besides, I'd put Lake in a weird spot if I did. So I stay silent and drape the bedding over the mattress. Thanks for the help. It's nothing. I'm happy we can have you here. I undress down to my underwear and fold my clothes down on a chair, then get into the makeshift bed. The duvet is cold. Too cold against my bare fur, but it should warm up soon. Lake sits down, Lake sits down on the edge of his bed, half undressed. How are you doing? Good. Very good, in fact. It feels really good being out of the closet. Ah, that's good. You seemed a bit quiet, so I was starting to worry. That's a weight off your chest, isn't it? Good night. Oh, Good night already? So early, I thought we'd get to talk for a bit longer. Good, <clears throat> good night, Lake. Coming out really feels freeing. I panicked a tad at first, but after I talked with Lake in the sauna and got enough reassurance from him... It turned out and turned into an outburst of euphoria. I'm still riding the wave of serotonin high it gave me. And it ended with us cuddling naked in the showers. I couldn't believe it's happening. With how absurd the whole situation seemed, but at the same time, Lake felt very real in my arms. All his gentle curves and hard edges, his dense fur and the heat of his body, the shape of his snout when he rested out on my shoulder. A door opens, and a moment later, the room falls completely dark. Sleep well. Good night. I murmured goodnight in response, pressing my head into the pillow. I toss and turn. I don't, know I don't know how much time has passed already, but I don't think I'll be getting much sleep today. It's not easy to fall asleep with Lake lying so close to me. He's so close, yet out of my reach. I open and close my paws, still feeling his wet fur on my pads. Lake, are you asleep? I, I, whis I whisper close to my ear. Lake is leaning towards me from his bed, as this, as this morning when he was waking me up. And now his face is hidden in the darkness. Only his mane shines in the dark, silvery as the moonlight. No, you? A disappointed sigh is the only response I get. Lake slides his paw from under the duvet and rests it on mine. I blink a few times, my heart speeding up. I'm not sure what his intentions are, though. He, pull I pulls, my he pulls my paw gently. And then again. I can barely see his face in the darkness, but his black eyes seem to be pleading. My heart races. Wordlessly, I nod. Quietly as I can, I slide from under my cold duvet into Lake's bed, as he moves to the side, making some space for me. His bed isn't as cold, warmed up with the lion's body heat. It smells like him, too. It's the scent of sunshine, of running through flowery fields. The scent of a warm afternoon when everything is perfect. I lie down beside Lake, who's very, very close to me on this small bed, clearly built with one person in mind. Our snouts are just inches from each other, our paws touching. Lake's eyes shine like two coals. The starry-eyed lion... His breath is hot on my snout. Our fingers intertwine. He moves closer to me and our bodies touch. He's so warm and soft. Can I? I nod. Lake's arms wrap around me impatiently, snuggling me into him. Lake. We're so close that I can feel his heart beating against my chest, racing just as mine. I really hope Jorgen is asleep already and doesn't hear us. Carvin, how could you be so cute? Cute? Yes, you have no idea. Lake snuggles me tightly, pressing his snout against my neck. I keep him close, snuggled into me. You have no idea how happy I am to have you here. His whisper is gentle, like leaves rustling on the wind. Thank you. I rumble in response, pressing my snout against his. Can you stay here with me? It's so much easier falling asleep with someone else. Mm-hmm. When I thought it'd be nice to try it, I had no idea I'd have an occasion so soon. My body is burning with need. But as much as I'd like to take it further, just having Lake close makes my heart melt. Falling asleep with someone else is the best part, as he said. One second, y'all. Water time. Hmm. He rubs his nose against mine and turns around, so that I can snuggle him like a big plushie. Our bodies fit against each other perfectly. He smells like flowers. Flowers and sauna. 
with my snout pressed into his neck, taking in his scent, an arm on his chest, holding him close to my heart, I close my eyes. Lake, I whisper, unable to form my feelings into words. My voice quivers, full of longing. Carvin? Day three. Snowflakes fall on my unfurled tongue, melting immediately. The warm glow seeps through the thin covers through the thin cover of clouds, and I bask in it, feeling it spread over my body. It's so good to be outside. My legs hurt from sitting for half the day, and I desperately need a coffee. But even just being back in the daylight instead of a stuffy lecture hall wakes me up. Okay, everyone, please gather here. Do you hear me well? Please, quiet. We have something important to tell you. Thanks, Devin. Professor Arnn cleared his throat, his voice suddenly loud and commanding, but clear like morning air. Thank you, everyone, for participating in today's lectures. If you feel like discussing any of the topics covered today in more detail, we will be holding a seminar in the cafeteria before supper. The returning bus will depart at 1700 from the same spot we arrived at this morning. That should give you plenty of time. Remember, we'll be here tomorrow as well. No need to rush to see everything in one day. For now, you're free to do whatever you like. Thank you. Please don't be late. We won't be happy if we have to wait for you. Finally, I thought it'd never end. The lectures weren't that long. They were. But I wanted free time already. I want to see the town. We have about three hours, and this place isn't big. There's tomorrow, too, so we can take it slow. Did you make any plans already? I want to see the, I want to see the main street. There's the gallery art space at the port, and one of the unused buildings. I just wanted to check that out. It seemed like a properly cool place. How about you? Oh, I didn't do much research. I'm fine with tagging along, though I need to get some food in me first. I think I stopped feeling hunger around the penultimate lecture and just fell into this numbness of energy conservation mode. Needless to say, my state is dire. Hey, what are you doing? Rune approaches us as we chat, looking around. I see that almost everyone is dispersed by now, leaving us, him, Devin, and Arn, all, and Arn only. Hey, we're wondering what to do. I think we'll go grab some food first. Oh, I know just the place. There's a tea house here I wanted to visit. I looked at their menu and they have Indian dishes too. You mentioned it yesterday. I'd be happy to go, but I don't know about the rest of the group. Y'all? Sounds good, as long as it's not prohibitively expensive. If we make it quick, we might have time for walking afterwards. Oh, what the hell, why not? Great, we can go then. It's so nice here. Lake walks a few steps behind us, enchanted, eyes clinging to every building we pass. The smaller towns here are always charming. People here really care about how they look. Oh, Rune, how did it go with the project yesterday? He looks cheerful, but something in his voice, quieter and more unsure today, makes me feel like there's something wrong. I left it as is. Maybe I'll get back to it today with some fresh ideas. So, here we are. This is it. Through narrow, through narrow streets lined with colorful houses, some brick, some wooden, we've made our way from the center to the, from the, center to the heart of an even livelier but, co but cozier district, full of cafes and small stores. I love it. I have to go out here later and get lost in all the winding alleys and squares. It makes me think of some magical medieval fantasy, something straight out of a computer game, almost. Oh, that looks quite unassuming. I was afraid it'd be, to, it'd be a snobbish place. Snobbish? Why would it be? Tea has this sort of connotation. And suddenly the smell of cooking reaches us, the mouth-watering aroma of garlic, tomatoes, and spices, so many of them in such high intensity that my nose can't pick them apart. One second, y'all. It is water time. My stomach reacts with a sharp pang of hunger, once again reminding me how empty it is. Oh, it smells heavenly. It really does. So, are we coming in? Any objections? None. Now get him before I collapse from hunger. One by one, we enter Rune. We, we enter Rune closing the door. The inside is dim and hushed, and smells of tea and incense a stark contrast from the cardamom and cumin we smelled out the side. The muted sounds of a bustling kitchen float out from behind a wooden door at the back of the shop. Behind the counter is a yak wearing a linen shirt, his large posture partially obscuring shelves with a dizzying amount of teas, just rows and rows of tins and bags. So warm, finally! Go to Termadog. Ah, got it, Termadog. But still your way her eller, would Bordet? How Bordet? Doggins put her star pa tufflin per Bordet. But and Bort. Ah, uh, talk! Guys, today's dishes are on the board over there, and we can order at the table. I glance at the board, but I don't recognize any of the names, even though it's in both English and Norwegian and some other language I don't know. Chanel Dahl, Okra, Rudy, Kitri. No, none of these ring a bell. I guess I'll just ask Rune. Only a few dishes. That's always a good sign. 
Do you have a table for the four of us? Oh, yes. We have a few left in the main room. Sit down and I'll bring you the menus. Thank you. One, one menu in Norwegian, three in English. Two in Norwegian, please. The main room is big and still mostly full. This place is quite obviously popular with the locals. Still, with people lounging around, some drinking tea, a few with metal plates with rice and some curry, it feels quiet and cozy. We find a table at the opposite side, at a window facing a small square with a fountain, covered in snow. Before we sit down, I quickly snap a pic of it through the window, pressing the lens to the window pane. Here you are. The act guy drops his four menus with a wide smile, heading back to the counter. They seem nice. Very. I wonder where they're from. They had a quite a heavy accent. The shirt makes me think of Nepal, but maybe they just bought it for the effect. Fits this place, certainly. I really like it here, by the way. I really like it here, by the way. I haven't been in any places like this one my whole life. Like this? You mean a tea house? This is or this Oriental, I mean. Half the tables don't have chairs and people sit on the floor. Oh, yeah, it's one of the nicest features of tea houses. I wouldn't do this to you, though. I tried to convince Devin to try them, and he didn't want to go out anywhere else with me for a week. Oh, hmm. This place isn't cheap. Not the tea selection, at least. I grab the menu. Turns out to be more of a book. There's pages and pages and pages of all kinds of teas and infusions and drinks. Most of them I don't even know, let alone the individual, individual teas listed. I guess I'll have to ask Rune about these, too. And indeed, the prices are rather high. A teapot of any green tea costs almost as much as a whole dinner. So, do you know what you want? No. Ah, first time in a tea house? Yeah, the names of the dishes seem very cryptic, too. Ah, I see. From what I saw, they were they serve complete meals here. So you get rice and roti. That's a sort of Norwegian... That's a sort of whole grain flatbread. A vegetable dish and a doll of your choice. Doll is a dish from legumes that goes together with the main vegetable one. They had okra curry and aloo gobi. That's potatoes and cauliflower and tomato sauce. I'd recommend the latter. Not everyone finds okra palatable. Though personally, I'm a fan. And they have only one doll today, or ran, ran out of the others. China is chickpeas. Everything sounds great. I'm really not sure what to order. Maybe I could go with the okra curry. I've had okra before and liked it. I want both, but you're taking okra already, so I'll get alagobi and try the okra form from you. Just one bite. One? One. I already chose my dish, so I'm going through the never-ending list of teas, looking for anything I'd recognize. Mm-hmm. About the teas, anything you'd recommend? Uh, what are oolongs? Looks like an ale. Water time. Ah, I've got some tea I can make after this, actually. Oh, those are nice. They're somewhere between black and green teas, usually with whole leaves, tightly rolled into small balls. Their tastes range from flowery and subtle to milky or buttery, or even roasted and woody. You can brew them many times, sometimes up to like six, and still have a lot of flavor in each brew. So you can get more than one brew of these here? Yeah, look here. The number of teapots next to the price is the amount of brews they serve of tea. Of each tea. If you've never been to a tea house before, then I suggest we take a different, a few different types of each one and share them. Sounds perfect, yes! Okay, so how about one green tea, one oolong, and one black? Hmm, I'm curious about this one. All right. I point out the menu at the category I don't recognize at all. Who are? What are these? Are you ready to order? Yes, thank you. We'll take Zen Zhuang Oolong, this Pu Er, Gyokuru, and maybe Jarjiling Autumnal. We only have first and second flush at the moment. I'm sorry. Ah, first flush then, please. And I'll take the set with okra curry. Uh, for me, a set with alugobi. Same for me. And I will take a set with okra curry. Okay, thank you. Is that all? Yes, thank you. So, how did you like the how did you like today's lectures? The lecturers were fa were absolutely fantastic. I don't know where they found them, but I haven't heard anyone talk about science as passionately. You could feel that it's in their whole life. I like the one about the future of space exploration. The lecturer had such a soft voice, and the seats in that lecture hall were so comfortable. I think it was the only one during which I managed to fall asleep. They were nice, but I wish they provided some food during the break. I didn't know I was supposed to bring my own snacks. There, there. The dinner is almost here. Uh, oh, excuse me. Here's your food. The same guy comes back holding a huge tray, and on it, four metal dishes, each with a huge heap of food on it. Then the smell reaches us, mouth-watering and so delicious, of spices, fresh chili and ginger, of coconut and fresh bread. As Rune said, each plate put before us has two different dishes, a mound of rice, some red sauce, a cucumber salad, and then a flat, round bread, dark in color. 
I'll bring your teas in ten minutes. Please enjoy the food in the meantime. Pepper did smucker. Wow, that's a lot. It looks so good. I take a spoonful of the curry and try just a bit, worrying it might be too spicy, but no. It's delicate, full of flavor, but totally mild. Oof, this is good. Oh yeah, this is the, the deal. The doll is just perfect. Jorgen, can I have a bite? Can I have my bite? Go ahead. Oh, I think I don't like okra. It's slimy. Well, I warned you. Good thing I got the potato curry. It's really delicious. This is a really nice place. No, I wish we had something similar in Anslow, serving both food and tea. And if they'd have a scene here, well, that would be easily be the nicest spot I've ever been in. A scene. Yeah, they could invite bands playing traditional music to live to play live in the evenings. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't know how many traditional bands are here. Can't be too many, but yeah, live music is the best. Do you go to concerts often? A lot, yeah. I have a few favorite spots. I've even played in a few. What? You're in a band, or are you playing solo? And why you've never mentioned it? It's more of a project than a regular band. We don't have rehearsals. We meet on the stage whenever a venue wants to host us, and play whatever we feel like in the moment, which is usually industrial or noise. We're regulars at one venue in the industrial district. It's an anarchist sled and lets us play once a month. It's a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. What other bands play there? Lately, it's mostly shoegaze and chill wave. The latter seems to be going through a revival, and the former is always popular. It's the easiest thing to play if you're an alternative kid and alternative kind kid and grab a guitar. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. It was super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.